So you finally got a VPN to improve your streaming experience, to help with your privacy, to stay protected online. But really, other than pressing connect on the VPN, what are some of those other hidden or premium features that your VPN offers? Things like app shortcuts, like kill switch, like protocols, like split tunneling. There are many, many advanced features which can greatly improve your streaming experience help you with your buffering, give you good VPN speeds. As you can see in the background, I'm connected to a VPN server in London, easily pushing over 350 meg downstream. So let's now talk about some of those settings which really can improve your streaming experience. And just before we start, I am now creating daily content on Facebook. So short videos, reels, more bite-sized content. If you guys are interested in that, please do make sure you are following me on Facebook. I will leave a link in the pinned comment and also the video description. So I'm on my third generation Fire TV Cube and you can follow these principles on any VPN that you like. But I'm currently using IPVanish, which is my preferred VPN, just because of the speed that they offer some of those advanced privacy features. And I do actually have a special offer, which I will be sharing at the end. Okay, if I go over to the settings, let's click on that. Now, the first advanced feature that we have in the list is connect on Android startup. And as the name implies, this basically means that as soon as my device is restarted or starts up, it will automatically connect the VPN connection with IPVanish. So for the people that are very privacy conscious, they don't want to do anything on their device without VPN. This could be a good option to enable if you want to do that. I'll leave mine off. Now, the next one we have in the list is one of the main ones, which is called split tunneling. Now, typically when you activate a VPN, you are now sending all of the traffic from your device, everything, all applications are being sent to that VPN server. Now, let's say, for example, you're happy with that, but you want certain applications to bypass the VPN and go direct themselves. Um, a real life example of this is, let's say I love watching USA Netflix, but I still want to use BBC iPlayer, which requires you to have a UK IP address. Now, in that example, I would enable split tunneling and I would add BBC iPlayer to the split tunnel. That means my VPN can go off to USA, but every time I use the BBC iPlayer, it will bypass the USA VPN and just connect directly. So if I click on manage apps, and this will now show me all of the applications on my device. Now I can choose which ones will always go direct and bypass VPN. So if I go to the top, let's click on user apps. Now in this example, let's scroll down and let's say, for example, we have BBC iPlayer. Let's click on that. That's now going to be bypassed. Let's just do one more for a test. In fact, let's just do a downloader. Let's do that as well. So we now have two applications bypassing that tunnel. Let's go back. So in the background, you can see I already have a connection to a USA server. So let's now back out of this. Let's see if I can use BBC iPlayer now, which in theory, if I'm using a USA VPN server, that shouldn't work. But because of that split tunnel, Let's see if that actually makes that difference. So let me start that up. Uh, let's just click on anything, watch now. Start watching. And we can see now because of that split tunnel, I can now properly access all of the BBC iPlayer content, even though my VPN is connected to a server in USA. That's working great, let's back out of that. Let's do the other test. Let me open up Downloader. Again, this shouldn't be using my VPN because of that split tunnel. And if I now go to a website like IP location, and let's see where it detects my virtual location is. Again, I'm hoping that should detect me in the UK. I scroll down and there it shows me my current IP address, just confirming that I'm not using any VPN again because of that split tunnel. Let's go back to the VPN. Now, before we continue, let me just quickly share this QR code that if you are looking for a fantastic offer for a ridiculously fast VPN, stay safe online, change your IP address, access geolocked content, protect your privacy, you definitely want to go ahead and scan this QR code for a superb discount. Then we have shortcuts. So this is actually a new feature that was added to IPVanish uh, a few months back. And what this allows you to do is create one click shortcuts, which automatically activates a VPN in a certain location, but then also launches your favorite application that you would use with that VPN. So we can see I've got that enabled. Let's press back and we can see I already have one shortcut, which is configured for the Netflix application connected to a server in New York. So let's add a new shortcut, click on add. So the first thing it asks is which VPN location do you want to use for this new shortcut? Uh, let's use New York. Let's click on that. And now it's asking which application do you want to launch automatically once you initiate this VPN connection? So let's say I'm interested in using this uh, third party streaming application. 
which I only want to use once my VPN to New York has been activated. So let's select that. And there we have our second shortcut. Now for a quick test, let me now disconnect. So I don't have any VPN connection running. If I now click on the shortcut, this should now make a connection to that New York server and then automatically launch my third party streaming application. So let's do that now. Three, two, one, select. I've clicked on the shortcut. It makes a connection to New York. And then the next three, two, one, we can see it's launched my favorite streaming application. So that's how easy it is to use shortcuts to quickly launch your favorite application once you've completed or initiated a connection to a VPN server. Let's go back. Then we have auto connect on IP vanish launch. So as soon as you open the application, it's going to connect for you automatically. So let's test that now. That's now selected. Let's now go back. Let's now disconnect from the VPN. I've now disconnected. Let's go back. If I now start the VPN again, so without me pressing any buttons on the remote control, that should open up and we can see it makes the connection automatically. So whichever server you connect to last, it will automatically start that as soon as the application starts. Let's go back to settings. Then we have protocol. Now, this is actually very important because it can really affect firstly the speeds you get, but also in some cases, if you find that your VPN just doesn't connect, maybe your ISP is blocking you. Maybe you're in a certain country where your VPN traffic is being detected. Changing the protocol can help you connect. And again, it can also affect your speed. So in this example, if I click on WireGuard, let's change it to um, the last one. Okay, let's now disconnect. Connect again, it's now using a different protocol. If I now press the home button, if I do a quick speed test with this, typically on this device, I get around about 300 or so meg, but we can see now with this protocol, I'm getting more like early 200. So it does make a difference to your speed, but in some cases, if WireGuard doesn't work for you or you just can't connect, but changing to one of the other options should then allow you to connect to the VPN. I mean, even 200 meg is more than enough, even for 8K streaming. But if I back out of this, let's try WireGuard, which normally is the fastest protocol. You can select that in here, go back to WireGuard. Okay, I've now reconnected using the WireGuard protocol. Let's go back to the speed test. And I'm hoping now with the WireGuard protocol, we should see better speeds. And you can see exactly that, guys. So from around about 220 meg on this device, I'm now pushing over. 300 or so, so that's working fine. Let's go back. Then we have LAN access. Now this is something that for a person that does like to stream local content, maybe you've downloaded uh, movies that you've purchased before, or you've taken copies of the stuff that you already own. How can you access that content on your Fire Stick or one of your other streaming devices? Because what happens when you activate your VPN is because your device encrypts all of that traffic, you can then no longer access any other device on your home network. So we can see right now my LAN access is disabled. Let's now press the home key. Let's now open up the key application, which is what I use to access all of my uh, media. If I go down into uh, videos, click on my NAS drive. It says couldn't connect to the network server because again, the VPN is ensuring that my device is sending all traffic to that VPN server and it can't be seen by any other device on my home network. So let's fix that now. So if I press OK, let's go back to my VPN. Let's now enable the option LAN access. And it says it allows local networks to be routed outside the VPN. So stuff on your local network, maybe your smart camera, maybe your NAS, maybe your media server, all of that stuff should now be accessible because I've enabled the LAN access. Let's now test that out. Let's quickly disconnect and reconnect. Let's go back to the care application. And we can see now when I click on that, three, two, one, and I can now see all of the movies I previously purchased. Uh, let's just start something for a quick test. Uh, here's some aliens. Just to show you that you can stream everything, even though my VPN is on, because of that LAN access, I can go ahead and enjoy all of my favorite local media. That's working great. Let's back out of that. Let's go back to the VPN. Then we have threat protection. So this is one of the advanced features that IPVanish offer with their service, whereby they can block trackers, they can block certain ads and anything malware or malicious like will automatically be blocked. The only thing is certain streaming applications will detect this. And because of that, it may break those applications. So this one I personally don't enable on my device. You can turn this on, but double check and make sure it's not breaking or stopping any of your streaming applications from working properly. Then we've got the big one, the kill switch. So again, for the people that are very privacy conscious, the people that will only use their device if the VPN is running, they can activate the kill switch. Now, the way this works is if I click on that, this actually launches another application called the IPVanish kill switch, which you do also download from the Amazon app store or the Google play store. If I now activate the kill switch, 
It says kill switch is now on. Let's go back to my VPN. So everything is connected. Everything is fine. And for a quick test, if I open up uh, my favorite streaming application, and we can see everything is working absolutely fine. Now, what happens when I terminate my VPN? So let's say, for example, maybe your VPN crashes or maybe something causes the VPN to stop. How does that affect your internet connectivity? Well, if I disconnect the VPN, that's now disconnected. If I now press the home key and we get the prompt, they're telling us that the kill switch has detected that the VPN is not running. Therefore, now in theory, if I start the streaming application again, we can see this time it just doesn't load because that VPN kill switch is ensuring that I can't do anything on my device because I don't have a VPN running. So maybe you are streaming certain content because certain applications that you're using could be in a slightly gray area. This way you can ensure that you won't be able to use any of those applications or really any application on your device until you have a VPN running. And because that's not gonna work. If I back out of that, if I just try a random application like good old downloader, again, because that kill switch is active, I can't do anything on my device. So let's fix it. The easy fix is we again activate our VPN. VPN is now active, which means now all of the previous blocks will be removed. So if I go back to the streaming application, we can see this time in less than three seconds, the application starts fine. So everything is working absolutely fine because my device knows that a VPN is running. And that really is the best way you can protect your privacy. If you are really privacy conscious, you can use a kill switch and ensure that nothing can happen on your device until a VPN is active. When you use a VPN, you are now no longer using your own IP address, rather you are using an IP address provided from your VPN service provider. And with this different IP address, you can then go ahead and unlock different content from around the world. You can unlock the entire Netflix library and really just keep yourself safe online. I've been using this for more than, I think, five years now. I have tried other VPNs during that time. I think I tried Nord for a bit. I tried Surfshark for a bit. I tried Express for a bit. But ultimately, I always come back to IPVanish because it just gives me that consistent performance. It allows me to access all of the applications I want to access and works great on all of my devices because they give you those unlimited connections. So one account, you can install it on 10 Fire Sticks, five laptops, 300 TVs, really as many devices as you like. So that kind of flexibility and that amazing price point, which you can see here for just over $2 a month, it really is a fantastic offer. Using my link does help support the channel. So many thanks for doing that. And again, at this price point, it's definitely worthwhile checking out. So really appreciate your support. Do like and share this video and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.